Good morning and welcome to today's lesson grammar every morning at nine o'clock and today we continue with the topic of nouns specifically we have proper nouns and noun phrases very interesting grammar is difficult grammar requires a lot of time a lot of patience a lot of study and i hope i can help a little i think it's necessary for you to study yourself of course you need to study and study and read but my intention with this video and with this lesson is just to try to help a little every morning and we will follow a program we will follow a schedule from the british council website and i hope it helps a little it will be difficult studying grammar is difficult but hopefully I can help you a little with my advice, with my tips and my explanation. If you have a question, you are welcome to leave a question and ask any question or doubt that you have. You can communicate no problem live or if you're watching later as well. Okay, so let's begin. Here is the page from the British Council website and it's the grammar section. So it's an excellent website an excellent location for information and today we're focusing on nouns in the section of grammar so we continue to the bottom and you can see all the topics we have discussed already countable nouns uncountable nouns typical problems with the countable and uncountable nouns group nouns yesterday you remember and things with two parts for example scissors binoculars trousers etc they're things with two parts and the group nouns for example a gang a group a herd a flock very difficult but very interesting lesson yesterday so today we move to the concept of proper nouns basically a proper noun is a noun of a place a person or an organization with a capital letter more or less that's the definition of a proper noun and i'm going to show you some examples here in the text so the same strategy the same method we read the explanation and we practice some exercises together so the introduction learn about the names of people places and organizations and do the exercises to practice them okay level beginner Names of people, Brian, places, Ireland, and organizations are called proper nouns. This is the grammatical explanation. Proper nouns is a very technical term. And we spell proper nouns with a capital letter. This is very unique to English. So, for example, a person, the name of the person has a capital letter, the name of the place generally has a capital letter and the name of the organization generally has a capital big letter and here are some examples we have yes we have five examples muhammad ali the boxer cassius clay so muhammad has a capital m and ali has a capital a cassius has a capital c and clay has a capital c as well birmingham is the place it's the location, it's a capital letter, Birmingham, Dublin has a capital letter, Cork, Belfast, London, Manchester, all these places have capital letters in English. China, the country, China has a capital letter, Ireland, England, Spain, America, well the United States, all the countries and places like this have a capital letter. Oxford University, this is an organization, capital letter capital two capital letters the united nations curiously united only has the capital and nations but there has no capital letter in this case okay also for festivals for celebrations christmas proper noun capital letter deep avali or depa valley sorry for my pronunciation but i think it's an indian festival and it has a capital letter because it's a festival and in english it has a capital letter easter just past easter 
has a capital letter. Ramadan, capital letter. And in the United States, Thanksgiving, capital letter. Next, we use capital letters for people's titles. When the person has a title, we use a capital letter. For instance, I was talking to Dr. Wilson recently. So the person has a title, Dr. Wilson. Everything depends on President Obama. Okay, so President is the title of this person, President Obama. Okay, Dr. Wilson, President Obama, capital letter for the title, capital letter for the title. When we give the names of books, films, plays in the theatre and paintings, we use capital letters for the nouns, adjectives and verbs in the name. Okay, so book, film, play or painting. For instance, I have been reading The Old Man and the Sea. This is the name of the book. That is the capital letter because it's the beginning. Old is the adjective. Man is the noun. And they are not included. Therefore, they're small letters. And C is the noun. So only nouns, adjectives and verbs in the name of a book, in the name of a film, in the name of a play or a painting. Only the noun, adjective and verb receive the capital letter and not the linker and not the article, except at the beginning. Um, and that's the case, but I have a question. Why the capital T at the beginning um, of this one? Anyway, Beatrix Potter wrote, the verb to write in the past irregular, wrote the tale of Peter Rabbit. Okay, so here we have capital letter for the adjective, capital letter for the name, Peter and Rabbit as well. Okay, next. So this is a book. And next we see is a um, painting. You can see the Mona Lisa in the Louvre. And the has no capital letter. I don't know why. Sometimes, for example, here it has the capital letter, but here it doesn't. And that's the doubt I have. So there's no explanation in the text here for this. Okay, let's continue. Level intermediate. Sometimes, we use a person's name to refer to something they have created. For instance, recently, a Van Gogh was sold for $15 million. So Van Gogh, the pronunciation is the GH, turns to F in this case, and it's the passive was sold. So the name is Van Gogh, and this is a representation of his work. So recently, a Van Gogh, a painting, was sold for a million, $15 million. Next, we were listening to Mozart. So Mozart is the person, but also it's possible he is the representation of the work. I'm reading an Agatha Christie. So Agatha Christie is the author, but it's possible to say an Agatha Christie, and this is some of her work. Bit tricky. Okay, let's try the exercises. This is the fun part. And we need to choose the sentence with the correct capitalization. So which sentence is correct with all the capital letters? England's second largest city is Birmingham, number one. Number two, England's capital E, second largest city is Birmingham. Or number three, England's second largest city is Birmingham. So the capital letter for a place. England, <coughs> like China, is a place. So England needs a capital letter. So number one is incorrect. Second is the adjective. Largest is an adjective, the superlative, and city is a noun. City has a capital letter. It's a place, but it's not a proper noun because the specific place, like a city or a country, is a proper noun. Therefore, city is just a small letter. The verb to be is and Birmingham is the proper noun. Birmingham is the proper noun, the city. Therefore, Birmingham has a capital B. 
So number two looks correct. Number three is not correct because city does not receive a capital letter. And this is confusing because the definition of a proper noun is a place as a capital letter, but it must be a proper name of a city or a proper name of a country. So number two, I think, is the correct answer. I hope you have the same opinion. Next, in Canada, Thanksgiving Day is celebrated each year on the second Monday of October. Capital letter, capital letter. So lots of capital letters in the first sentence. The second example, we have Monday has no capital letter. This is the difference. Monday has no capital letter in the second sentence. In the third sentence, in Canada, Thanksgiving Day is celebrated each year on the second Monday of October. Second has the capital letter. So that's the difference. Second is an adjective. Therefore, an adjective generally does not have the capital letter. So number three, I think, is incorrect. And number two, the day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, always has a capital letter. Therefore, number two is not correct. So the correct answer is number one. In Canada, Thanksgiving Day is celebrated each year on the second Monday of October. That's correct. Okay, let's continue. Part three. John F. Kennedy was president of the United States from 1960 to 1963. Same sentence, number two. Same sentence, number three. John F. Kennedy is the name. Names have capital letters, Brian. So this is correct. President is a title. I think it's a title for the person. Therefore, I think... Hmm. I'm confused with president because normally we say President Kennedy and President Kennedy has a capital letter. But in this situation, it's not the title. I don't think it's a title. So I think president has a small letter, in my opinion. However, United States is a place. It's a proper noun. It's a country. So the United States has a capital letter. Capital U, capital S. So number one is not correct. Number two is not correct because United States has a small letter. Number three, president has a small letter. I think that's good because it's not a direct connection to the name. For example, President Kennedy and the United States has capital letters. So I think number three is the correct sentence. I don't know what you think and what your best option is. I might have some mistakes, but let's check the answers at the end. Number four, the association of Southeast Asian nations, ASEAN, was founded in 1967. The associate, okay, so the same sentence, two and three. Organizations generally have capital letters. An organization has capital letters. And here, there's no capital letter for association of the Southeast. Number two is the same. Number three, yes, we have capital letters. So I think, because it's an organization, every adjective and every noun has a capital letter. Therefore, option three is better, in my opinion. That's it. Number five, the first prime minister of independent India was Jawaharla Nehru. Now, here we have capital letter for prime minister. Mm, so this is the same as the president and I have a big doubt because the president in the previous sentence maybe was incorrect because prime minister here has the capital letter. First is the adjective. So I think the best option is probably number one because first has no real necessity for capital letter. First is the adjective, and the adjectives don't have the capital letter. So I think the best option is number one. Okay, and we continue to the last option as well. You can see these three sentences are the same. Solzhenitsyn's One Day in the Life of Ivan Denisovich was published in 1962. This is the title of a book. And the author is Solz Henitsin. 
and that's correct he has a capital letter she has a capital letter therefore the title has a capital letter all the words all the adjectives all the nouns and all the verbs in the title of a book have capital letters so they has no capital letter so this is incorrect number one i think is incorrect number two is very good because all the nouns adjectives and verbs have capital letters so number two looks very good so let's select number two number three is very similar but in the have capital letters but in the are not nouns adjectives or verbs therefore in the do not have capital letters therefore number three is in correct i think so let's check the answers it's possible we have some mistakes and we have some errors six from six very good okay so they are proper nouns now let's go back to noun phrases this is the second part of today's lesson and it might be a short lesson but that is okay and we look at the next section it's called noun phrases if you have a question you can put the question in the Facebook chat. I don't see any comments at the moment, but if you have a question, you are welcome to put the question here. And I'll just write, hello everybody. And we will continue. So let's check the next section here. And this is the title, noun phrases. Learn about the structure of noun phrases and do the exercises to practice. Level intermediate. Often, frequently, a noun phrase is just a noun or a pronoun. So the technical term a noun phrase basically is regularly a noun or a pronoun. Okay, a noun or a pronoun is the significance of a noun phrase. For example, people like to have money. People is the subject and people is considered the noun phrase. It's the subject pronoun, but also it's a noun phrase. And the verb is to like, etc. I is the subject, therefore I is considered a noun phrase as well as a subject pronoun. Modifiers, pre-modifiers. Remember the modifier changes the noun, okay? Noun phrases can also include determiners, this, that, these, those, determiners, this, that, these, those. Those houses, plural, away, those houses are very expensive. So this house, that house, these houses, those houses are very expensive. This is considered a determiner. And therefore house is the noun, but it's possible to have a predeterminer, pre-modifier before the noun. Okay, next, quantifier is related to the quantity, the number, the amount. So I have lived in a lot of houses. I have lived in a lot of houses. And house is the noun phrase, plural, and subject, verb, preposition, a lot of is the quantifier. I have lived in a lot of houses. Numbers, very similar to quantifiers. Numbers, my brother owns, possesses two houses. So this is possible before the noun phrase. And these are modifiers, determiners, quantifiers, and numbers, and adjectives. I love old houses in general. Okay, these parts... Of the noun phrase are called pre-modifiers because they go before the noun okay so we use the order like this in english we have determiners and quantifiers is better than numbers is better than adjectives so a lot of okay so for example here is, is a better example of the order the structure determiners and quantifiers the our, these, some, all those. Numbers, six, adjectives, children. Sorry, nouns, children. So the six young children, the six big children, the six happy children. This is the correct order. The happy six children is possible. The position to change the number and the adjective is not very strict. But the determiner 
and the quantifier is necessary at the beginning. The numbers and the adjectives, I think, in spoken English is flexible. But the um, position of the determinant and the quantifier is necessary at the beginning. Second, our young children. No problem. Six young children, these six young children, some young children, all those six young children, the sort of position is important, and there are many young children. Let's try the exercises. Okay, so this is difficult because now we need to do the answer, even though I was probably not focusing on the, the theory too much. So put the pre-modifiers in the correct groups, quantifiers and determiners. What are quantifiers is related to quantity and number, and determiner is related to things before the noun, such as a demonstrative. This, that, these, those, and our possessive adjectives. Okay, so quantifiers, rich, no. Rich is an adjective or number. So rich definitely is an adjective. These, this, that, these, those, it's a determiner and it's a demonstrative specifically grammatical explanation determiner and demonstrative so this goes in this position exciting adjective few quantifier so talking about the quantity few people few days quantity our possessive adjective our holiday our book this is considered a possessive adjective and this is also considered a determiner before the noun. The definite article, the book, the car, the house. This is the definite article but also the determiner. Many, again, quantifier related to the numbers. Um, yes, related to the numbers but specifically related to the quantifier. For example, three is obviously a number. Uh, 10 is obviously a number. Two is obviously a number. And five clearly is directly related to a number. Serious adjective, serious man, serious woman, serious movie, serious book, adjective. Large adjective, large book, large television, large uh, table. Young adjective, young book, young table, young animal, etc. And small adjective as well. Okay, now we have a few more. We have my. My is the possessive adjective. My book, my house, my pen, my jumper. So possessive adjective, and this is also known as a determiner. So possessive adjective is in the determiner position. Both the quantity both days, both people, numbers or quantity. I think it's not a number specifically, therefore it's a quantifier and similar with all quantifier and determiners. It's possible I have a lot of mistakes, but let's check. And we have 18 from 18. So that's a clear understanding of the difference between quantifiers, determiners, numbers and adjectives. These are all modifiers that we can use to um, adjust or to change the noun. Okay, let's check the second exercise. Okay, so we have different words. Large, for this recipe you need two eggs. Put the parts of the sentence in the correct order. Parts of the noun phrases are in capitals. So two large eggs, or eggs large two, or large eggs two. They are the, cap they are the noun phrases. And the structure is the first structure is four because it's a capital letter. For this recipe, you need, do you remember the position? Number, adjective, and noun. So noun is at the end with a full stop. And usually I think the number is before the adjective. That's generally the rule. Number, first, adjective, and then the noun. Next. I would like to try on shirts three these. So the first part is the capital letter, I would like. The last part is the noun, the shirts in the plural. Three is the adjective and these is the demonstrative 
in its demonstrative, this, that, these, those, but also a determiner. So the determiner goes before the number. So that's very important. And I think, I think in other languages, it's the same. I think it's the same structure, more or less, in the other languages. Next, suitcases, small, where are, to, our. First part is the capital letter, where are, and the last part is the question mark, suitcases, for traveling. Now, the position of adjective, number, and the determiner, possessive adjective, what is the order? Small two hour suitcases, two small hour suitcases. The first one is the determiner, the determiner or quantifier, and this is the possessive adjective, hour. Next is the number, hour two. And finally, it's the adjective, our two small suitcases. We continue. The richest in the world, people five, can you name? The last word, in the world, question mark. The first word, capital letter, can you name? The richest people, five. So we have an article, demonstrative, definite article, also demonstrative. Richest is an adjective, superlative adjective. People is the noun and five is a number. So I think the noun is at the end, people in the world. The demonstrative is at the beginning. And is it number or adjective? I think it's number first and adjective. But remember, in spoken English, it's possible to change the position. Can you name the richest five people in the world? No problem to change the number and the adjective in spoken English. But the other positions are necessary to stay the same like this. Next. First class, all died in the accident. Passengers, 16. So the last word is died in the accident. Now we have four different words and we must select the correct order. We have no more information about the capital letter. So we have adjective, first class. We have all, demonstrative or a quantifier. We have passengers is the noun and 16 is the number. So the noun is last. The demonstrative or the quantifier is first. Number or adjective is flexible, but usually it's number and adjective, all 16 first class passengers. Um, in this case, it's necessary to position 16 and first class. It's a little unusual and a little strange to say all first class 16 passengers, but it's not too bad. Okay, let's continue. Younger live and work in South Africa, both brothers my. The last part is the full stop live and work in South Africa. Younger is an adjective, comparative adjective. Both is a quantifier, so it's a demonstrative. Brothers is the noun, and my is the possessive adjective, in also known as the demonstrative. So the first one is the demonstrative, or the quantifier, and the demonstrative is the possessive adjective, my. Adjective, um, mm, sorry. Both is also a quantifier. So both my brothers is the noun, and therefore adjective goes here. Both my younger brothers live and work in South Africa. <coughs> Number uh, two more. The inflation is one of many problems serious facing the government. Last part is the full stop facing the government. First part, capital letter, inflation. Inflation is one of the many problems serious. That is the article. Many is the quantifier. Problems is the noun and serious is the adjective. So problems, I think, is the last one. Adjective maybe is before. And article is first. And then the quantifier. It's a bit difficult. This one is a bit difficult. So inflation is one of the many serious problems facing the government. I think it should be good. And finally... De, in the match moment, Ronaldo's goal was one of few exciting. The last part is in the match because it's the full stop. First one, capital letter, Ronaldo's goal was one of moments, noun, few, quantifier, exciting, adjective, and the article. So the question is, 
sorry, the positions are um, moments is usually last. Okay. Then we have the article or the demonstrative, and I think that goes here before the quantifier and then before the adjective. So Ronaldo's goal was one of the few exciting moments in the match. Finish and check the answers. Eight from eight. Very good. Okay. Finally, I think this is just repetition. Can you remember the noun phrases from the last activity? It's not difficult. This is just revision and it's not useful. It's not, well, it's very useful, but it's not good for me to do this now. This is better for you to do for homework, maybe. So we had pre-modifier, things you, words you use before the noun, and now we have post-modifiers, words we use after the noun. Other parts of a noun phrase go after the noun, and these are called post-modifiers. Post-modifiers can be prepositional phrases, so the phrase with the preposition, for instance, a man, this is the noun, with is the preposition, a gun, a pistol, with a gun, prepositional uh, phrase, the boy, the noun, in preposition, the blue shirt, the house, on the corner, prepositional um, phrase. It's possible in ing phrase, for example, the man standing over there, the boy talking to Angela. Okay, so it's possible ing, or it's possible the preposition. It's possible a relative clause. So that, who, who, and we. So this is considered a relative clause. The man we met yesterday, or the man that we met yesterday. The house that Jack built. The woman who discovered radium. So we have noun, noun, noun followed by relative clause, relative clause. Okay, the eight year, an eight year old boy who attempted to rob a sweet shop. It's possible a that clause, which is almost the same as the relative clause. These are very common after nouns like idea, fact, believe, suggestion. For instance, he is still very fit in spite of the fact he's that he's over 80. Very interesting. So the, um, that here is the fact the fact that so after the fact we usually have that hmm so he's still very fit in spite of despite the fact that he's over 80 next she has got she possesses the idea that people didn't like her so she has this uh, perception this idea that people don't like her or didn't like her so after idea and fact, we typically have that clause. Okay, suggestion is the same. So there was a suggestion that the children should be sent home. Also, it's possible a two infinitive. I've got no decent shoes to wear. So shoes are the nouns. Decent is the adjective. And after the noun, you can have the prepositional phrase. You can have the relative clause, you can have the that clause, and you can have the infinitive. So very important things come after the noun to wear. These are very common after indefinite pronouns and adverbs. So you should take something to read. I need somewhere to sleep, infinitive, after indefinite or adverb so something to read so typically the infinitive is after something or somewhere something is considered an adverb and somewhere is also considered an adverb as well i believe so there may be more than one post modifier for example an eight-year-old boy with a gun so this is the prepositional phrase after the noun post modifier and we also have the relative clause who tried to rob a sweet shop that girl is the noun over there is the prepositional clause in a green dress prepositional clause drinking a coke ing clause so there's three examples at the end let's try the examples of post modifiers decide what type of noun phrase is in each sentence match them to the definition so 
what type of noun phrase is in each sentence. The first one, can you recommend a good place to eat? Recommend is the verb, you is the subject, can is the verb. Good is the adjective, a is the article, place is the noun. So, the post modifier is the infinitive verb, and this was the rule. It's possible to have the infinitive after a noun, and this is a post modifier. So we need to say infinitive noun phrase with a to infinitive. That looks to be correct. Next, this subject, the verb is a book which changed my life. Book is the noun, and the modifier, the post modifier, is which changed my life. This is considered a relative clause that, which, who, they're relative pronouns, but this is the relative clause which changed my life. So this is a noun phrase with a relative clause, the same as this one as well, okay? The president was angered, so this is the passive, by the suggestion, remember, suggestion that he should resign, he should finish his job. So the president is one subject, the verb is to be and the verb to anger. So this is the passive by the suggestion is the noun. And after the noun, we have the modifier that he should resign. So here we have the that clause. Okay, noun phrase with a that clause, I think. The man at the bar would like to buy you a drink. So the man is the subject location at the bar would like to buy you a drink so the noun here is the bar would like to buy you a drink so this is the post modifier and ing no prepositional clause maybe yes maybe because at the bar but i don't think so noun phrase with a relative clause yes let's select this one it could be wrong but i think this is the most comfortable answer. Next, I will always remember the day we first met. So subject, verb to be in the future, adverb, I will always remember, the verb to, to remember in the future, I will remember, the day, this is the noun, we first met. So here we have, again, a relative clause. So I think this one is incorrect. Yes, so let's check this one and put relative clause in the next one. I think that's the best one. Okay, and finally, who is that funny woman wearing the blue dress? So the woman is the noun, and wearing is the ing clause. So that's very clear. Therefore, process of elimination. The bar, at the bar, would like to buy you a drink. This is considered a prepositional clause. It's a long prepositional clause, but I think it's the correct answer. We could have mistakes, six from six. Okay, very good, excellent. So that is the category of post modifiers. And that is everything for today. Two very short, well, interesting lessons. So just to go back to the topic, we did proper nouns today, like a city, a person, a organization, capital letters, a book, a movie, a play, a painting, capital letters. There's some rules, but they generally have capital letters. A noun phrase is usually a noun and the thing that comes after, like a post modifier or a pre modifier, they are noun phrases. And they're two very interesting topics for today. And now that's everything complete in relation to the topic of nouns in relation to my classes this week. We have covered every topic here and it's very interesting. And that was the topic for nouns. Let's return to English grammar. And now we probably move to verbs. Tomorrow, we start with a topic of verbs. And if you want to prepare, you can read the first topic yourself. And verb phrases, irregular verbs, questions and negatives, short forms, the verb to be. So we have lots and lots and lots of topics in verbs. So maybe the next two, three weeks, we might be discussing verbs so tomorrow we start with verb phrases and if you want to prepare a little you can start reading this today and tomorrow i will try to explain a little and to give you help if necessary 
Great. So that is the plan for tomorrow. And obviously this was the lesson today. Um, my schedule, you can see here, my schedule for the week. It's very similar from last week. Today we have grammar, but at 11 o'clock I have a lesson a través de Portuguese. Totally a través de Portuguese. And that's very interesting and difficult. So I will speak in Portuguese for all of the lesson at 11 o'clock. One o'clock we have a newspaper article. And at three o'clock, we have a lesson continuing to focus on the Liverpool accent. I have 23 lessons this week. I'm giving 23 free lessons on Facebook this week, Facebook Live. And hopefully that will be interesting for you. And you can enjoy and watch and join all of them or any that you can. Everything is free and it's for the public on Facebook Live. I want to grow my page. I want to grow my work online. And that's my objective. Everything is free. But if you are enjoying the work and enjoying the content and you want to support me, you want to help me, you can make a voluntary subscription, a voluntary monthly subscription to me to support me. And you can decide one euro per month, two euro per month, five, 10, 20, whatever you want will help me definitely. And the information is here, my bank details, if you want to create a connection with your bank or alternatively with PayPal, it's possible to do this. And you go to my website here and PayPal has the information to uh, subscribe to my bank and also a link here for um, PayPal. You select the link and you go to my website and all the information is the same and you have the buttons here. You just need to press the button that's appropriate for your subscription. Five euro, you press this button and enter your details. 10 euro, press this button, enter your details. 20 euro, press this button, enter your details. Two, three euro, whenever you want. Excellent. That's everything for today. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. And a bit difficult, but always grammar is time consuming and it requires a lot of concentration and energy, but it will benefit you if you prepare your grammar. And if you read your grammar, it will definitely benefit you. That's everything. Um, again, if you have a question, please leave your question and comment. And thank you again for watching. And I hope that you enjoy your morning and maybe I see you at 11 o'clock. Um, talking at the rest of Portuguese. Thank you so much. Have a good day and talk to you soon. Bye.